Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Akakragash, Yahweh being named the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in Ha the Shum name, Yahweh Shai, being named the begotten Son, meaning He delivered, He saves. Akakragash, Holy Spirit, double honors to the Apostle, who's great, most noble, well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. All right. So through the Spirit, I want to get into this lesson. You know, the scriptures is a two-edged sword. Okay? Make sure you know how to swing it. Okay, all right? That, Lord willing, that'll be the title. The scriptures is a two-edged sword. Make sure you know how to swing it. Because <clears throat> ultimately, this, this stems back to the principal foundation of being a hearer of the word and a doer of the word. You don't want to just be a hearer of the word only. Okay, that's unbalanced, first and foremost. Scriptures say a false balance is an abomination to the Lord. Okay, so it would be unbalanced to just hear the scriptures. You know, be a yes man, soak it up, you know, eat it up, right? You want to hear the scriptures, right? But you don't want to do them, okay? The Lord is not dealing with hypocrites, okay? So, ultimately, the scriptures are meant for our welfare, for our, uh, our welfare, for our benefit, you know? The scriptures is meant for us to profit off of them if we apply them you know but if you don't apply them and then the scriptures can be used to be a witness against you which can lead to it slaying you pretty much or it being a testimony against you leading you to to receive the judgment written in the scriptures man yeah how was i told the scribes and pharisees he said uh hey, don't think that i will accuse you to the father you have one that will accuse you even moses in whom you trust you know because pretty much, hey, the scriptures is already written. Okay? So that's your accusation if you're not applying it. Yahweh also said, don't think that I'm going to accuse you to, to, to the Father. You know, the word that I speak unto you, you know, in the last day, it shall accuse you pretty much. Because, you know, Yahweh is preaching of the salvation of the Lord. But if you don't take heed, then you're going to get, the, you're going to receive the judgment and the destruction of the Lord, man. So this is uh, Hebrews 4 and 11. It says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief, right? So those who lacked belief in Yahweh, Bashem al -Shai, those who didn't believe in the scriptures led to their destruction, okay? Those who didn't believe to the word of the Lord led to the destruction, man. So we have to labor in this truth. We got to put in work for Yahweh, Bashem al -Shai, that we may, we may obtain the rest of the kingdom. Now, of course, we're not saved by uh, strictly works, because if we're going basically strictly off works, then our righteousness has filthy rags, you know. But we do have to uh, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We do have to back of our back back of fire. <laughs> we do have to uh, solidify and back up our faith by our works. All right, you know, slip with the tongue, but you know, it's all through the spirit. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of Yahweh Shemashah is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So this word is sharper than any two-edged sword, man. Okay? Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's right. So the, this word, the word of Yahweh Shemashah is the true power, man, because it could cut you to, it could cut you deeper than any two-edged sword. And it can cut you to the deepest parts of your body and your spirit, man. Okay? You know, scriptures speak about how certain dudes, when they heard the word, they were pricked in the heart, man. All right? You know, they were cut. Okay? And you see that happen a lot of times with certain people. When they get cut, they react emotionally and they react carnally instead of just humbling down, accepting the fact that you got cut and applying the scriptures so that you don't get keep getting cut, you know? It's uh, concerning whatever the topic may have been. You know, that's way more respectable. If you confess your faults, you humble down, you confess your faults, you admit that you're wrong, then for you to just react carnally and try to buck up and, and, and justify yourself when you're, you're still wrong, regardless of why the reason why you did it, you're still wrong. You know? The Lord's not dealing with that self-justification spirit, man. You got dudes who always have an excuse why, you know, they did what they did, but it's like, bro, you still went off. You still did the wrong thing, okay? You know, acknowledge that, all right? Acknowledge that. Now, certain things are circumstantial, you know, but I'm just speaking in the general basis, okay? 
scriptures say how a sinful man would not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. So you got people out here who they just they just give straight excuses, man. Okay? That's because they don't want to take reproof. They don't want to take correction. And that's why they're gonna get slayed with that spiritual sword, which is the word of Yahbash Mashai, man. Which really when that when your spirit is broken, man, that shit hurts more than anything else, man. Scriptures say, you know, a wounded spirit, who can bear, man? Okay? Give me any plague but the plague of the heart. Or the plague of the mind. So when your mind is sick, when your spirit is sick and wounded, that shit is worse than any other sickness or plague or pain, man. Because your spirit is cut, you know? So the scriptures is a two-edged sword. Make sure you know how to swing it because just like how you could use the scripture to cut somebody, guess what? If you are not applying the scripture to the best of your ability, those same scriptures can be cut, can be used to cut you. And that's the beauty of Yahweh Shem The Lord is not a respecter of persons, man. Okay? The Lord is not a respecter of persons. All right. This is uh, Psalm 69 and 22. It says, let their table become a snare before them and that which should be have been for their welfare. Let it become a trap. And that's talking about two thirds of our people. The scriptures is really meant to be a table unto them. It's meant to be, a, uh, you know, uh, for their welfare. But since they're being wicked and they're stumbling at the word, it's going to be a snare and a trap for them, man. Eh? Because they're not applying the words of Yahweh Shemashai. Therefore, the words of Yahweh Shemashai is going to be the witness against them for their destruction. All right, Hebrews 4 and 2, it says, And ultimately, why don't they apply the words of the Lord? Because they don't believe. Hebrews 4 and 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So they heard the same gospel that we heard. They heard about how they were Israelites. They heard about the 12 tribes. They heard about, you know, the truth. Okay? Just like how we heard about it. Right? But what was the difference? How much Moshai gave us the spirit to have faith in it and to apply it, you know? And Lord willing, he continues to give us that spirit to do so. But two thirds wasn't given that spirit. They didn't believe. Therefore, that's going to lead to their destruction. Revelation 21 and 8. Uh, second Ezra 15, starting from the top. Okay? All the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. I believe that's second Ezra 15 and 4, man. All right? Look what happened to our forefathers. Uh, in the wilderness, you know, those who didn't believe in Yahweh Bashmah Shai, what ended up happening to them? They ended up getting destroyed by various judgments of the Lord. So he was sworn to, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. That's it. So this word that's supposed to be for our, for our prophet became a snare for those who didn't believe in the words of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, man. I want to show you the power of believing on the Lord and applying his word, man. Okay. Hebrews 2 and 1, it says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Talking about these scriptures. We have to give earnest heed to these scriptures. Okay. Lest what? Lest at any time we should let them slip. Right. And why would that be a bad thing? Because if you let the word slip from you, if you don't hold yourself diligently in the fear of the Lord, as it says in the scriptures, your house shall soon be overthrown. Many times in the law, the Lord said, be circumspect to do the things which I commanded you to do. You know, be circumspect in uh, keeping the Lord's ways. So you, you can't let these things slip from you, man. Because in the flesh, you know, the flesh has that nature to kind of let certain things slip. But when you really focus on something, it's hard to let it slip, man. So if, you're, if your mind, if your treasure is truly focused on this truth, okay, the scripture saying, where your heart is there, where your treasure be also. So pretty much, if your mind is constantly running on this truth, that's because this truth is your treasure. If your mind is constantly running on the world, that's because the world is your treasure. But you got to understand, you know, there's consequences for the route that you take. Okay? If you want to take the worldly route, you might live it up in the world according to your pleasures in the flesh. But guess what? After that, it's going to come heaviness and destruction. Okay, and if you go down the route of the righteous, you're going to go through the narrow and straight gate. You might feel the sorrows, the pain, the house of mourning. But after that, it's going to be uh, life everlasting, you know, salvation. Okay. Psalms uh, 125 and verse 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Yeah, meaning what? The correction or the rod of the wicked. Okay. It's not going to rest upon the righteous, meaning the righteous is not going to face the same judgment as two thirds will. Why? Because the righteous are attending upon 
the true rod or the true correction, which is the words of Yahweh Shemel Shai. All right. And the scriptures is likened unto a rod, you know, um, Micah 7 and 14, you know, feed thy people with the rod. Okay. Psalms 23 and 4, you know, thy, 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 thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. It's talking about these scriptures, man. Okay. But guess what? The judgment of the scriptures won't rest upon the righteous unless the righteous start doing what the wicked is doing. Okay. Just like it says in uh, Ezekiel 18, if the righteous man trusts in his righteousness and turn back from his righteousness and commit iniquity, he's going to die. But if the wicked man turn back from his iniquity and do righteousness, he shall live. The ways of the Lord are very equal, man. So in this truth, you have to continually sowing righteous seeds, man. The scriptures say, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. So we can't faint in this thing. We have to continue to, uh, you know, do well-doing, man. You can't get tired of being righteous, you know. You can't get tired of doing righteousness, you know. You have to take a you have to have joy in it, really. It has to be a joy unto you, okay? Because then you're going to look at this truth like a chore, and then, you know, your heart is not truly in it, okay? You're just doing it for whatever reason you're doing it for, but at the end of the day, that's not going to lead to you to the fruit of salvation, you know? Like Paul said, for if I do this thing willingly, I shall have a reward, man. We cannot serve you by constraint. It can't be pulling teeth just to get you to do a lesson or just to get you to watch a lesson or just to get you to read or pray or fast or or to do what the scriptures tell you to do, you know, and you know it's in your power to do it. It's not supposed to be fucking pulling teeth to do that shit, man. All right. And yeah, I'm cursing because really, you know, that's that shit pisses me off when you think about it, man. You know, and now, OK, I'm in the flesh, too, so I can't be overly hard. But, you know, when you think about that shit, it's like, bro, the Lord really just trying to help you. The Lord trying to help you. But you want to go and do what you want to do. You don't want to you don't want to hear it. Neither do you want to apply it. OK. And that's why you're going to be destroyed if you don't repent, man. OK, and. And. Really, you know, going back to the title of this lesson, the scriptures is a two-edged sword. Make sure you know how to swing it because everything that I'm shooting out, it comes right back to me, okay? You know, the Lord is not dealing with hypocrites. So pretty much through the spirit, you know, if we're out here pushing this word, let us truly be about that life when it comes to these scriptures, man, okay? Because just like how we're using the scriptures to justify or condemn others, the scriptures can be used to justify or condemn us, man. We pray, Yahweh Shemesh, have mercy upon us, you know, that we may do that which is pleasing in sight and apply the scriptures, you know, okay? But if not, it can be used against you, all right? So be take, get like, like Hebrews 2 and 1 said, therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. So we have to give earnest heed to these scriptures. Let's at any time we should let them slip, man. Bracket the Yahawa, bracket the Oshai, bracket the Yahawa, bracket the Oshai, bracket the Yahawa, bracket the Oshai. Call Lion La Yahawa, Bashem El Shai, Bashem Kakodash. Bless you, Yahawa, bless you, Yahawa Shai. All praises to Yahawa in the name of Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the Apostle Elders, Great Mills, and Never Well. Peace and blessings to you, like Shalom.